Not so very many years ago, a story was written under the seemingly innocent title, The Lady or the Tiger, by a young man named Frank R. Stockton. A perplexing and titillating mystery which provoked nationwide discussion, and even Frank Stockton's social life was nightly clouded with the grim determination of every hostess to tear from the soul of the young author his precious secret of The Lady or the Tiger. What was the pestiferous problem propounded by this classic little fable? Well, let Mr. Stockton tell you the story of the lady or the tiger in his own words. In the very olden time, there lived a semi-barbaric king whose ideas were large, florid, and untrammeled. He was a man of exuberant fancy, and when every member of his domestic and political systems moved smoothly in its appointed course, his nature was bland and genial. But whenever there was a little hitch and some of his orbs got out of their orbits, he was blander and more genial still. For nothing pleased him so much as to make the crooked straight and crush down uneven places. Among his exuberant institutions was that of the public arena. But this was used not to give the people an opportunity of hearing the rhapsodies of dying gladiators, nor to enable them to view the inevitable conclusion of a conflict between religious opinions and hungry jaws. No, this vast amphitheater was an agent of poetic justice in which crime was punished or virtue rewarded by the decrees of an impartial and incorruptible chance. When a subject was accused of a crime of such importance to interest the king, public notice was given that on an appointed day the fate of the accused person would be decided in the king's arena. When the accused stepped out into the amphitheater, there were directly opposite two doors, exactly alike and side by side. It would be the duty and the privilege of the person on trial to walk directly to these doors and open one of them. He could open either door he pleased. He was subject to no guidance or influence but that of the aforementioned impartial and incorruptible chance. If he opened the one, there would come out of it a hungry tiger, which would immediately spring upon the guilty man and tear him to pieces as punishment for his guilt. But if the accused person opened the other door, there would come forth a lady the most suitable to his years and his station that the king could select. The perfect fairness of this is obvious. On some occasions the tiger came out of one door, and on some out of the other. The accused opened either door he pleased without having the slightest idea whether in the next instant he would be devoured or married. For, in one instance the wedding ceremony, as in the other instance the funeral services, must follow immediately. It mattered not that he might already possess a wife and family, or that his affections might be engaged upon a female of his own selection. There was no escape from the judgments of the king's arena, which were not only fair, but positively final. Now, this semi-barbaric king had a daughter as blooming as his most florid fancy, and with a soul as fervent and imperious as his own. As is usual in such cases, she was the apple of his eye, and was loved by him above all humanity. Among his courtiers was a young man, of that fineness of blood and lowness of station common to the conventional heroes of romance who love royal maidens. And the princess loved him with an ardor that had enough of semi-barbarism in it to make it exceedingly warm and strong. This love affair moved on happily for many months, until one day the king happened to discover its existence. Never before had such a case occurred. The accused was obviously guilty. He had loved the princess, and neither he, she, nor anyone else thought of denying it. But the king would not think of allowing any such detail to interfere with the workings of his beloved tribunal. The youth was immediately cast into prison, and the day appointed for his trial. At last, the appointed day arrived. The great galleries were thronged with people, with whom the institution of the king's arena was very popular, since they never knew whether they were to witness a bloody slaughter or a hilarious wedding. As for the princess herself, had it not been for the moiety of barbarism in her nature, it is probable that the lady would not have been there. But her intense and fervent soul would not allow her to be absent on an occasion in which she was really so interested. And now may we pause a moment on the subject of the princess, as she sat there paler and whiter than anyone in that vast ocean of anxious faces. From the moment the trial had been ordered, the princess had thought of nothing else. Possessed of more influence and character than anyone who had ever before been interested in such a case, she had been able to do what no other person had done. Gold and the power of a woman's will had brought her the secret of the two doors. She knew behind which door would wait the savage tiger, 
and therefore behind which would stand the lady. And uh, not only did she know that, but she knew who the lady would be. It was one of the fairest and loveliest of the damsels of the court. And often the princess had seen, or imagined she had seen, this golden-haired creature casting glances of admiration upon the person of the accused young man. And sometimes she had thought these glances were perceived and even returned. So naturally the princess hated the woman who would be the reward of her beloved should he open the proper door. But in the arena, suddenly all was ready. The signal was given. The beloved of the princess walked into the arena. His appearance was greeted with a low hum of admiration and anxiety. No wonder the princess loved him. What a terrible thing for him to be there, opposite those twin doors, those fateful portals so terrible in their similarity. And when the accused youth looked at the princess, he saw, by that power of quick perception which is given to those whose souls are one, that she knew behind which door crouched the tiger and behind which stood the lady all blushing and radiant. He had expected her to know it. He understood her nature, and his soul was assured that she would never have arrested until she had discovered for herself the secret. And then it was that his quick and anxious glance asked, Which? It was as plain to her as if he had shouted it from where he stood. There was not an instant to be lost. The question was asked in a flash. It must be answered in another. And then she raised her right hand and made a movement toward the right. No one but her beloved saw her. Every eye but his was fixed on the arena. He turned and with a firm and rapid step walked across the empty space. Every heart stopped beating. Every breath was held. Every eye was fixed immovable upon that man. Without hesitation, he went to the door on the right and opened it. Now the point of the story is this. Did the tiger come out of that door or did the lady? The more we reflect upon this question, the harder it is to answer. It involves a study of the human heart which leads us into devious mazes of passion. Think of it, my friends. Here is a hot-blooded, semi-barbaric princess, her soul at a white heat beneath the combined fires of despair and jealousy. She had lost him, but which should have him, the lady or the tiger? How often had she stared in horror as she thought of her lover opening the door behind which waited the cruel fangs of the tiger? But how much oftener had she gnashed her teeth when she saw his rapturous delight as he opened the other door and beheld the lady? Would it not be better for him to die at once and go to wait for her in the blessed regions of the semi-barbaric future? And yet, that awful tiger, those shrieks, that blood! Her decision had been made after days and nights of anguished deliberation. She had known she would be asked which door. She had decided what she would answer. And without the slightest hesitation, she had moved her hand to the right. The question of her decision is not one to be lightly considered. And it is not for me to presume to set myself up as the one person able to answer. So, I leave it with all of you. Which came out of the open door? The lady or the tiger? <laughs>